Sometimes there's anime that comes out where I just have no idea what to expect from it. And The Apothecary Diaries is a great example of that. I had no idea what to expect from a series about a girl in what is seemingly similar to ancient China working as an apothecary in the Imperial Palace. I don't really know what to think about that. That's just a kind of a strange concept that I had never heard tackled, but I had had experience with anime centered around apothecaries or with drugstore pharmacists, and, and those were anime like Drugstore in Another World, the slow life of a cheat pharmacist, which had a pharmacist that in the episodes I saw, he wasn't cheating or being like sneaky or anything. He was just a dude who was apparently isekai'd away into this world. Um, I really don't have much I want to say about this anime other than I, I don't like it. I, I really don't like it for a lot of reasons that I, it's not even worth me talking about. So I didn't have a great experience with the anime based around pharmacists, doctors, you know, I don't know. It just never really caught my interest, which is funny because there is a lot of American shows that I had watched as a kid where that's the whole drama. Like House is a great example of this and provides a blueprint of what you can do in these kind of medical stories to give some tension, drama, and you know, some intrigue into the uh, whole case that's going on here. And I would say that The Apothecary Diaries is far more like House than any of the other more disposable medical related anime. The Apothecary Diaries and Freerun have been two of the top anime throughout fall of 2023 and winter of 2024 anime seasons. They are exemplary shows and I already have a video all about Freerun that you can go see. I, I love that show and I'm so sad that it's gone. And the other show that's really panning me is The Apothecary Diaries because I love this show. Now with those of you who aren't familiar with The Apothecary Diaries, it follows a girl named Mao Mao who lives in a country that looks a lot like ancient China in the Tang Dynasty. In universe, it's not actually China, it's the country of Li, but the entire society is basically set up to be exactly like ancient China, from the names, culture, everything is basically that, except they don't have to deal with uh, the whole actual history of China and could do more of their own thing. So I actually really respect that creative decision because it gives you so much more freedom to do what you want with these characters in this world and not be beholden to the actual history of ancient China. Not that I don't love a good historical anime. I mean, Vinland Saga is a great example of how you can do an anime set in a historic time period with actual people who most likely existed. Well, I mean, of course, Canute existed, but there's debatability around some of the other people of how they existed or what their actual lives were. It doesn't really matter, though. It is interesting to have characters in an actual historical setting, but I also respect people wanting to have freedom and divorcing themselves from that so that they can do what they want with their characters. But Mao Mao works for her adopted father, Lao Main, who is an apothecary in the local red light district of the capital city of the country of Li. One day, Mao Mao is out collecting herbs for her father when she's suddenly kidnapped and finds herself sold into the form of slavery for the Imperial Palace. She is absolutely determined to keep a low profile and just work through her two years of service that she has to do as part of her contract, just working as a servant girl in the Imperial Palace, and hopefully once that's all done, she can escape her kidnappers and go back home. But things don't really work out like that because Mao Mao is stationed in the rear palace where all of the king's uh, concubines live. But when two of the emperor's young children and one of his most favorite concubines concubines get deathly ill, Mao Mao is forced to try to use her knowledge to communicate to people in the most subtle way that she can that the, she knows what's causing the issue and if they listen to her it can save people's lives. Though she delivers this message in a very indirect way because again, she does not want to actually be known as the person giving out the messages or someone with knowledge. She wants to keep a low profile. But she very quickly fails because when her advice is found helpful and helps save one of the Emperor's children, the eunuch in charge of the rear palace, the incredibly impossibly handsome Jin Shi, decides that he's going to investigate and find out who has all this secret knowledge? Who is useful to him? And it's not long before Jinshi has Mao Mao working directly for him, much to Mao Mao's dissatisfaction because even though Jinshi is impossibly handsome, she finds this more annoying than actually attractive and, and finds his effect on other women to just be really grating. She's a very interesting character. She does not have the same interests as most people have. She has no reason to really care about love or affection or anything like that. She is interested in one thing and one thing only, and that is apothecary work. She loves apothecary work and testing out poisons and trying cures on herself a lot. It's a problem. She is obsessive 
and it's she is a gremlin. So most of the episodes of Apothecary Diaries follows Mao Mao on different smaller adventures, trying to figure out things for Jinchi on Jinchi's behalf, trying to solve mysteries around the palace and help improve his status and also get benefits her greatly because she is usually given a number of different ingredients or something rare so that she can do whatever she wants, with also a budding romance growing between the two characters, even though Mao Mao is incredibly resistant to it. This anime is animated by OLM, Oriental Light and Magic, and Toho Animation Studios, a newer studio it seems that hasn't really done a whole lot of actual big anime. They had a Freerun short and a music video and something that I don't even think this is released. I don't even know what this is. They've done a few things. I think the bigger thing is they're working with Oriental Light and Magic, one of the most legendary anime studios in the industry. Well known for adapting Pokemon for years and years and years, the 1997 version of Berserk, Odd Taxi, Summertime Rendering. I've covered a decent amount of their anime offerings and they consistently bring forth and adapt really interesting, fascinating work, work that has captivating characters and an interesting story and plot. And this anime is also directed by Norihiro Nagano Ganuma, who you may know as the director of the first season of Ancient Magus Bride, another incredible, interesting shoujo type anime. Apothecary Diaries is also technically a shoujo because there is a lot of romance elements in it, even though the main character seems pretty aromantic herself. But when I think about the tone of both of those series, I can actually really see the connection and see why he was a great choice for this job. This series is incredibly well directed and well storyboarded out with very interesting scenes and direction that they take. And he is the storyboardist for a lot of the actual episodes. It's really impressive work. One of the things I absolutely love about this series and things that stands out most is the setting of this ancient China-like country and just the amount of amazing costumes and makeup. All the performances that these characters are trying to put on in their daily roles is so fascinating and the way that they're able to communicate that so effortlessly, not even through a lot of dialogue, is wonderful. They're also able to show a decent range of what people's lives are like in this society from people in the red light district where Mau Mau is from and also people in different parts of the palace and how the actual structures of power work in this setting. That's not the main focus but it is nice that it's in the background it gives you something more to chew on which I really love when an anime can get into the weeds and actually explore the more complicated aspects of that world's economy or politics and how that reflects into our own politics or in this case, the own politics of actual uh, ancient China. The music is top notch. The lighting is wonderful and sometimes just incredibly gorgeous. I, I love what anime has been able to do with lighting. I, there's so many different things we go into with that, but lighting in anime has just been so great. This is another example of an anime that understands how to use lighting and make it help their anime stand out from the crowd more. OLM has always been really good at this, uh, especially lately. So... Big props to OLM for their lighting. And I also want to talk about how Mau Mau has some of the best reaction shots. I There's so many that would just make amazing gifts. Like, like a character in chibi form is not new or inventive or anything crazy like that. But I actually really do enjoy these reactions from Mau Mau because they are so sparingly used throughout the series. Whenever they are used, it just it really nails a joke for a lot of times. And sometimes they even don't even go chibi with it. They just have like a shudder go through her. It's The comedy is wonderful and it's it's such a perfect mix between comedy, drama, and also political intrigue and romance. There's everything that you could want in this series, and it's so wonderful. It's just a really satisfying story, and the way they're able to build up characters, hint things about characters, and then when you finally get that reveal for the character, it just, it changes so much. It's, there's some really great reveals here. I'm not going to spoil any of it, but the characters are all just very fascinating, and I think really well understood and taken care of by the actual main writer for this series. You can tell there's a lot of love that's gone into each one of these characters and fleshing them out and the creator wanting to understand these types of people and their role in society and how that affects them as a person and you have different ways of just understanding life around you. There are some people who are very, very different for a number of other ways. You could most likely form some neurodivergency, just gonna be real. Just they haven't said that. I'm not gonna diagnose everyone, but Mau Mau and some other characters definitely have a little bit of something going on there. And it's really fascinating to see how they think and how they observe people around them and are able to use that to 
draw conclusions that other people couldn't really get to. It's what makes Mau Mau's investigation so fascinating and easy to follow. One thing I will say is the first 12 episodes, the first core of the series, that half goes by so quickly. It's incredible. Each episode feels like it's jam-packed with all these different twists and turns and interesting stories. And really, that part of the season just absolutely flew right by. The second half of the season, the first part of the second half, like episodes like 13, 14, uh, until about halfway through the second half, the, these episodes are a bit slower, right? And that may bother some people. I, I don't want people to drop it because after you get past that point, it is necessary setup for what they have going on later in it and the payoff is so great it is it matches if not surpasses the highs of the first half of the season it's incredible and i think it would really be a shame if people see these slow episodes and drop the series i really hope no one does that because even though these episodes are slow in this second half they are building to something and that something is totally worthwhile i'm not going to get into what but it is worth it so worth it. The Apothecary Diaries is, is an incredible anime, and if Free Ren wasn't out, it would be my favorite anime of the past couple seasons, like without question. But Free Ren is also like a once in a generation anime, so kind of not fair. These two anime, though, are incredible. If you want an anime that has romance, an interesting setting, it's a medical drama and a medical mystery featuring medicine that would be available in the years like 600 to 900 AD. So it's like really, really specific time period. I love that drama and I love the political intrigue that's layered on top of that because palace intrigue, let's face it, palace intrigue's entertaining. I find it incredibly entertaining and I love a series that understands it and is able to really use that and not really not shy away from like including the emperor and like the actual officials and trying to like parse through the politics of this world and the different relationships between concubines and them politicking against each other or working with each other and you know the actual politics of having children and what that matters for your status and who becomes the empress there's so many things in this series that i found incredibly fascinating and also got me learning more about the actual imperial china what the actual systems were like for real imperial china in the tang dynasty and it's just a, it's just an incredible series it's not going to be a perfectly accurate historical drama it's not trying to be that either but I, this is definitely something that you're going to want to give a try if you have any interest towards any of the things that i've mentioned here i love it i think you'll love it too the dub for this is really good i love the dub the sub as well is of course excellent the voice actors all nail their roles so perfectly and it's the comedy is so well timed i i love this series i love it so be sure to give the apothecary diaries a shot it's one of the anime that i've been highly recommending to anyone i can it's an anime that has very wide appeal and can be enjoyed with people who don't really like a lot of the more juvenile types of anime this is an anime for everyone i love it you'll love it give it a shot Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm going to be doing a number of videos on anime from this past winter 2024 season. There's some anime that came out this past season that I'm really, really excited to talk about finally. So look forward to that. So be sure to follow along. Subscribe if you want to see videos similar to that. Like this video if you liked it. Comment if you have your own thoughts on, you know, the Apothecary Diaries or anything that I've talked about in this video. I'd love to have conversations with you as I always would. But of course, I want to be sure that you have a great day, a great night, or whatever it is you're having, and stay rad.